Okay, sports fans, back here at the bench. I just wanted to show this because this is kind of interesting. And it, it's kind of a fun little project. It's just a, a simple DCC conversion. I'm sure there's billions of videos out there on these, or at least millions. But this is something that I'm doing. This is an Atlas SD35, again, which I have no need for. But you know what? It's, it's fun. Pennsylvania. Road number 6008, you can see it there. Picked it up, I don't know, somewhere. I think it was at uh, Model Train Market or something like that. It's used, but, you know, that's okay. It's one of the silver versions. And what I'm going to do, it, it did not come with a decoder. had an original motherboard. It did have a slot here or for two speakers or for a speaker. depends how you want to do it. It's got an LED in the back. It's got the LED there in the front. For the headlight. So what I'm going to do is... It's all just kind of sitting here right now. But this is an interesting little project, like I said. So, I went with an AS-MB2 motherboard. Because I discovered that the Atlas connectors... These are the ones off the lights. This one and this one. They fit into the connectors on a board. So all you got to do is go click, click, and in they are. Now, what I did do, I did rewire, I soldered on connectors. Oh, see, that's going to fall off. I had it just sitting there. But that is the rear headlight and the LED. Now, what I did for these, both of these had resistors on them. It had a resistor, so I had to take, oh, down here. So originally, the red wire was over here, and it went through a resistor to the positive. I un so I unsweated that, cut the resistor out, re-sweated that there. So now it's just a pure LED. And I, I checked it. It does work because the TCS motherboards do have resistors for LEDs. So that's the rear LED. And then the same thing for the front. The front LED, the only difference, if, let's see if I can carefully turn this and not mess everything up so you can see it. It did have, um, I might not be able to show that. If you see there, there's a, there's a, there's a short that was and one of those SMD resistors. Um, so it, the positive lead came into that, went through down through that resistor and then over to the LED. So I took that out, soldered on a short across it and the rear one that didn't touch the, the black wire and it works. So again, since the motherboard has got current limiting resistors, I just took the resistors off of these two boards. Now I can use the LEDs that came with the Atlas unit. So that's the AS, like I said, the AS-MB2 with the sockets. Everything fits. I did uh, use the, um, the TCS provided sockets on... on on the rear because I, I soldered it on. So since I was on sweating it and resoldering, I, I just used the new new ones because I like to have the red. The, they had the wrong colors on it. So I went with the, uh, you know, N NMRA standard colors, red and black, red on the right side. So same thing here, red on the right side. Um, I'm not too worried about the light. I know it should be blue and yellow and uh, blue and white. I get that, but whatever. I don't feel like cutting these off and re-sweating them because these do fit, so that's okay. So they fit in the board and they should work. Also on the board is connection for the Keep Alive, which I'm probably going to put right there. It sits on this little shelf that's already there on the speaker. Again, that was I think was to support the old, the original motherboard, but I'm going to go ahead and use that. You know, across here, I did trim off the, oops, <laughs> I did trim off the pad, the uh, connector there. And then I'll put a piece of uh, Gorilla Tape or something like that and just set the LED, uh, LED, the TCS, keep alive, boom, right there. There is a spot on the board, let me see if I can do this so you all can show it. Of course, you may know this already, but. So there on the left-hand side, for some reason, they don't have sockets for these. I'm not sure why. 
The blue and black, that's where the Keep Alive goes, and then the, the two wires for the speaker. They have to be soldered on. Yeah, why they're not connectors, I, I really don't know, but that's, I guess, a good question for me to ask the boys over at uh, TCS. Okay, so those, those will go there. I am going to rewire the motor leads. You can see I did add a flat piece across here. It's got some tape here, a little bit of canopy glue up there off the shelf on the very front. I did cut off the back side of that, I guess as a weight, you know, weight slash LED holder. I cut the weight off it. There's a little shelf there, and I'll be able to show it, that that's sitting on and it's glued into. And then that will then get a piece of tape on the back of this to hold that right there. And then I'm going to re-sweat. Like I said, I do have the, one of the nice things about the TCS, this TCS board, you can get it, it comes with the Keep Alive, so it comes with the, <laughs> throwing around here, it comes with a KA4 Keep Alive, that's part of the price of the board, and I got the one that came with this wiring kit, which has, I think, enough, you know, for all, it's got the two track leads, the motor lead, and then the front and rear light lead. So, for the same damn price. So, it's like, why not? Even if I don't use all the TCS-provided connectors, keep them for the next time, you know what I mean? So, I got it. So, I'm going to... I took these off. I'm going to use this because it's orange and gray, you know, for the motor. And I want to run it. It's kind of hard to see here, but you can see where the one connector is. That's actually the negative. I'm going to run that through that opening right there because the motor connector is the is that socket right there so the other one was a lot lot longer so i'm going to take this see how it fits run it down through i can tape it along the side to there and to the other side which is the positive and the negative so that way that should keep everything inside again you got to watch clearance on these puppies It'll keep everything inside the width of the board if I run it up through that connector there in the center just by rewiring it. So not a big deal. I was probably going to rewire it anyway because it was way too long for the way it was looking. Now, the only thing I'm waiting for, I do have two TCS 30 millimeter round speakers because they fit right in. I was going to try to come back and put a, you know, a scale sound speaker in it, but I was like, oh my gosh, sorry about that. How in the world do I do that? So these fit right in, right into the 30 millimeter opening that's already there provided. So I'm, I'm going to use it. I did cut slots in the back for the wires to go from one side to the other, but there's no markings at all on these speakers. And I have two of them, one for each side. So I'm going to wire them in series. So I know I want to come from the speaker positive on the motherboard, although it's not marked, to the speaker positive over here, the negative on the other speaker to the positive of this speaker, and then the negative of this speaker back to the motherboard. But I just want to be sure exactly what is what, just in case I I don't want to mess it up. Now, I know all it is is you test it, you can resolder stuff, and yeah, I get that. But if I can shoot a quick note to them, and they can tell me, because there's, like I said, there's the one speaker, and I don't see anything that shows, you know, positive or negative on the speakers. Here, Here's the speaker that I purchased. It's a 19, 1696, 30 millimeter round. So I think it should work if I put them both in series. <laughs> put them in series. Of course, it could be both of them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be series, would they? They're knucklehead. All right. So I just wanted to show this. Oh, one <laughs> another thing to notice on this, because I, I struggled with this. Whoa, there goes the speaker. Ah, panic and ignore. Okay, sorry. Put that away. If you look at the truck, you see how they're... I don't know if I can point, but see the back? There, there's no brake shoe on it. Now, maybe it should be there. But if there is, because I had it turned around, because if you look at the front, you see the brake, the brake shoe there? Can I, can I get into there? And just, can you see that? All right. They have to be toward the fuel tank on both ends. Because I, 
I did a certain amount of, because the, the one side has got the speed recorder cable on it. So this front truck, <laughs> sorry folks, that front truck was correct. The brake housing's here, the front, oop, the front's clear, and then it clears this, which I think is where the coupler goes in. So that will swing nice. Well, I had, slide back, doo -doo -doo -doo. I had the rear truck back, I had the side frames backwards and then i had that brake shoe in the rear and it kept hitting this and for the life of me i could not figure you know i had it in and, and then i you know tried to move it make sure it moved and it didn't click it would click click bang 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 it wouldn't move i said that's no good it's got to move and then i noticed aha uh -huh, it was the back part if it's, it's just long enough with that shoe to hit this so I had to drop the truck back out, swap the two sides. So I, I wanted to keep red on the right-hand side. So I turned the side frames around, popped out the connectors, redid it. And now, obviously, you can see it doesn't have the brake shoe back here. And so it swings. So again, just another thing to be real careful of. And I didn't even look at that. When I took this bad boy apart, I just kind of started ripping and tearing. And I did take pictures along the way to help myself to go back and look. But, okay, but I didn't take a picture of that. Because I didn't realize that that was going to hit that. <laughs> but it sure enough did. So I fixed it. So now everything everything works. So like I said, all I'm really waiting for now. Doo -doo -doo -doo, come back. Is you know a quick answer, hopefully, from TCS on how to wire these properly in series. I know I could just put one in there and just be done with it, but uh, I, I got time to kill. So that is that. Like I said, that has got the the mount in there. It's got some Gorilla Tape under here, a little bit of canopy glue up there. So I think that's pretty good. This is ready to go. I, I did. I don't know if it's going to show up, but I did put two notches there with a Dremel tool. Just put some notches in, so... When this puppy sits in here, like that, I can run the wires from one speaker through the notch, down here, through the notch, over to here. That way it's not high. And, you know, I don't come over, oops, sorry, I don't come over the top of this. I, I think I have clearance. I think the highest part of this is the top of this. So this is you know, got to clear inside the shell. So as long as everything's below that, I should be okay. Which if I look at it, I think I'm okay. But you know what? This has got a slot in it to run the wires for the light and for the rear truck feed. So, okay, fine. So that way I'll run the speaker. It'll stay below all of this. I can run those wires, put a piece of cap on across to keep everything nice and low. Keep alive here will fit. It's below the top of the speaker housing here. And then everything should be good. So... We shall see how this looks. Uh, and I know I'm babbling on here, but uh, maybe I'll do one more quick video when it's all together. And, oh, I do have... All right. So this is what I use. Again, that's what I use, the AS-MB2 with the connectors on it. I do have an ESU uh, 58429 decoder already programmed. I had it on the load pro programmer. And, of course, they have a... A sound file for it at the ESU site. So that was downloaded, installed, programmed, set up kind of the way I like it. It was, it was set up on the Loc programmer tester. So I didn't actually have it in, in the locomotive. So I'll probably put the locomotive obviously back on the programming track, then try it, listen to it, make sure the volumes are good, the horn I like, the bell I like, and all that kind of fun stuff. So, all right, more to come as we uh, progress along here, but it's, I'm having fun so far. Oh, boy. All right. Well, I just wanted to show this because this is a mistake. Freaking idiot. And that's, you know, hey, that's what we do on this channel is we show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm the ugly. Most of what I do is bad, and there's a few things good. <laughs> All right. So I was real proud of myself on this Atlas SD35. You can see in the back there. 
Shell's all weathered up. Everything looks pretty nice. I had it over on the layout. I got the DCC conversion done. It has a sound or an ESU 58429 decoder in there. It's all programmed. It's got a uh, KA4 Keep Alive that I put in it. It's got, you know, the TCS motherboard, all the JST connectors from the Atlas, original Atlas motherboard tended to, you know, fit okay. So I was like, oh, cool. I kept the original front LED for the front headlight. And then what I thought was going to work, I got two TCS 30 millimeter round speakers, put them in the back here, wired them in parallel you know, came off the board, came into here, out of here, to here, to here, back to the motherboard. I'm like, wow, this I am such a smart freaking dude. Yeah, well, no, I'm an idiot. Because after I had it on the layout and had it run and ran good and had it cal and I calibrated it over there. That's what the uh, ESU CV54 uh, thing. That's cool. I brought it back and said, okay, let me put the shell on it. Yeah, well, it doesn't fit because the only clearance that you have, or the what the, I just not the only clearance. The clearance on this unit, I'm going to try to point, um, stand by, I grab something here and uh, probably wiggle the camera. Oh, eh, sorry. All right, so basically, let's see if you can see here, you can't go past this right here. The, the hood slides down and fits right against that. Well, this, and then this lower down is is way out. I mean, by way out, it's a you know millimeter or two, but that's too much. It's not going to fit in the shell because oops, as he bangs a light inside the shell. You see, there is no, there's no room. It's straight up. You know, could you come in there and sand it, grind it? Yeah, I'm not trying that crap, and probably not enough to get the thing to fit down. I don't know if it's going to show if I point down. Ah, I feel, oh, a little bit better. It's, it's really hard to see, but this right here and then the part of the, this part of the speaker down here, basically you have you know, there's clips and then you have to this bottom part and you can see how this is all out of it. I, I didn't notice it. Until I uh, went to put the shell on. Like I say, I was clapping myself, you know, patting myself on the back. Hey, nice job, dude. You know what you're doing. You're a DCC expert. I'm a, I'm a DCC moron. <sighs> All right. So what I have to do, well, I got to take these back out and see if I have something that may fit there. I mean, I don't really love these speakers. That They don't sound great. You know, I tend to like the scale sound speakers. I don't think they have... I'm, I don't know. I have a bunch of extra. I'm going to look. But, again, the reason I did this is this whole weight slash speaker holder holds the rear LED. And it, you know, it fits perfectly. And the thing I like about this is it's all right here. You don't have to pull the shell off. Lay the shell over. You know, have wires coming off the shell for the lights. And that's it. that just kind of bothers me. But... I didn't want to have to, you know, glue an LED to the rear or to the <laughs> to that light. You see the light uh, piece there. I, I probably could get in there and get an LED in there and and you know glue it on. I, okay, that, that that'll probably work. And then not use this um, and somehow get a speaker in there. You, you cannot go here. It looks tempting, but the hood's there. So you can't do that. So that's why I left this here, kept that there. The TCS motherboard fit nicely with room on this little ledge to to mount the, or to set the KA4. So that all worked out fairly well. So what I can try is I can try pulling these back out, see if there's room in there maybe to set a speaker in there. But you got to be careful because, you know, the drive shaft for the, it's going right through here. And that's why they probably put this on each half. Now, unless I can find other 30 millimeter, much thinner speakers that don't stick out like this. I, I think this is sticking out because of the fact that this 
is sticking out. So that makes it stick out a little bit further. You can see right there where it's sticking out. And I saw that. I was like, oh, that's interesting. But it didn't dawn on me. Yeah, you moron. You got a problem. Okay, so let me get this apart. Let me see what I'm going to do here. Again, I may wind up just looking for another speaker uh, to sit in there. Because this is, this is the way it came. So obviously, Atlas must have something that fits in there. And the shell fits on it, I assume. Uh, this is a silver model, not, not silver model, not a gold model. So it didn't have the sound with it. Oh, damn it. All right, well, let's uh, get back to the drawing board and see what we can do here. But uh, again, just, <laughs> you know, you got to be careful on these DCC conversions. Uh, they're not all that easy. Everyone likes to love it, and there's billions of videos about it. But this is one video that's going to show you a mistake, and that is definitely a mistake. So there you go, folks. Okay, the ongoing saga of how to be an idiot. So what I did is I took the speakers out. I was able to get in, peel away some of the the uh, insulation they had on it and unsweat them and pull them out. Because what I figured I'd try to do is save these two wires. Because these go right to the speaker uh, connection on the motherboard. So there they are. So they're there. And I was so proud of myself because I had, <laughs> again, you know, this speaker was wired in, in series with the other one. I cut a little slot here. This speaker, I took this this second wire and I brought it through here and I cut it short. And then I uns I took the original wire off of this speaker and I ran this one around and sweated it to it. So this ran through here and I was like, oh, you got to keep everything nice and, you know, below this. And, you can and I was like, yeah, right, moron. So, see, that's what I mean by the drive shaft going through there. So the only room you have is basically up here, and it's freaking curved. <sighs> Shoot. Now, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I, I'll contact Atlas, or at least I'll look at their site. They must have a speaker for this. Because that's this is an Atlas original. This is the way it came. So they must have a round speaker. And it came with weights in it. So obviously something fits in there that'll fit inside the shell. So I'm hoping they do have it. You know, worst case, maybe I just buy one of those and put it back in. And, and just live with it. Again, I didn't really like the sound all that much out of these two TCS speakers. It was okay. But they're definitely not the same as uh, the scale sound speakers. So I just don't know if there's... And I don't think scale sounds are going to make anything small enough that's going to fit, you know, inside here. Um, I, I just don't think they are. So I, I'm kind of stuck here. Maybe staying with uh, an Atlas speaker if they offer them. So I'm going to look at the Atlas website and see what they have. And uh, <laughs> ah, rats. All right, we'll see what we do. All right, real quick, we're back here again in this freaking den of iniquity. And um, <laughs> what I checked, these are the original weights that were part, that were inside that. And these seem to measure about three, just over three millimeters, where these speakers are just over five. And I looked online, and Soundtracks makes a round speaker that's probably about the same as this. It's 5.3 millimeters deep, and that's about what these are. Well, if these are 5.3 and these are about 3, well, that's, there's your difference. So it definitely has to sit inside, the, you know, the lip here, because that's what these do. They fit directly inside there. Okay, so I did look. Let me just do a quick pan over here. La, 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 la. Sorry, I'll go slow. You see the mess that is the workbench. This is the Atlas gold parts diagram for an SD35. And they do make the speaker. Or actually, it's two, it looks like. Part number 730401. And this weight is the same on both the silver and gold. So the sound, non-sound. It's the rear weight. 950-402, it's the same thing. Here's the other diagram, the one that I have out of the locomotive. And the rear weight, 
954.02. Same thing. So, I shot a note because... Oh, hold on. I'm losing, losing my... Ah, sorry. Shot a note to Atlas asking them if they have this because their website does not have this. Man, I hope so. Because you would think that, you know, if folks buy a silver locomotive, they're going to want to add a speaker. And it doesn't look... Now, I haven't scoured the earth looking for other... Let me go back over. Doo, 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 sorry. I said, I haven't scoured the earth looking for three, just over three millimeter round speakers. They may exist. I don't know. Um, I could go look at Steam Powered Back Shop. I could go look at, um, well, I looked at Soundtracks and TCS. This is, this is the TCS 30 millimeter speaker. I think they make a, a bigger one. It's got high bass or something like that, but it looks like this is not going to fit. I need something in this size, which is about three. Maybe a hair over three millimeters. So, all right. Let's see what Atlas comes back with. Again, it probably is not going to sound as great. I mean, in fact, these didn't even sound as good. Um, but I just don't know. I looked. I said, okay, can I get something in here? Again, maybe I could fit something in there that's kind of low and rectangular. But you got to keep it inside. I have to come up with some kind of mount. Because you can't have it sitting right on top of the freaking, you know, drive out. That'd be crazy. Oh, man. I just don't feel like, you know, mucking around and taking this off and coming up with a new system. I might just bite the bullet. If Atlas has the the correct speakers, buy them, put them in, wire it up, be done with it. Hey, this can always be the second unit <laughs> in a consist or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, it's, it is frustrating. But... Oh, uh, yeah. Model rarity is fun, right? Yeah, fun being a four-letter word. All righty. Hey, we're back here at the bench and working on the SD35. And these finally came in. I ordered them from Litchfield Station. They actually are speakers that are, according to their site, and they show a cool picture, designed to fit in the Atlas units. In that these are thinner, thinner. They must be, uh, you know, three millimeters or less or so or something like that because they definitely are thinner. And I tried them in. Looks like they're going to be good. So what I did, based on the red, they have some pretty long, pretty heavy wires. So I just unsweated them. But I did mark the positive. So I already have a wire coming from the decoder that'll go to this side. Then this black will go to that red. Probably had a little tiny jumper to fit the spot I have on the unit. On the other side, the other wire from the other side of the speaker on the decoder, well, I'll just sweat it onto that. Boom. So that's good. And I'll save those wires because, hey, they're they're nice wires. I'm sure they'll be good for something. Truck leads or something like that. So again, let me just show you. That is the SP-30R-08A. That's what I purchased. Two of them. You get one in a one in a manila pack like that and that's them so i'm gonna go ahead get them soldered up and get them in the unit now i don't think to be honest they're gonna sound all that great just because of they're I, I you can see how thin they are because they're thin and I, they're just probably not great speakers but at least there's a sound i'll turn it down you know relatively low volume it'll be in a consist so that way you'll just get to hear the sound of the prime mover most of the time probably won't be a leader eh, who knows it may but uh most likely may not use you know the horn and the bell and all that kind of shenanigans so all right so that's that let's uh, get them installed and see how it goes okay here we go got the new speakers in the atlas sd35 pen c 6008 so there they are. Oh, there goes my phone. They look definitely thinner. I did try it on the layout just like this. It's, eh, it doesn't sound great, but, you know, it sounds okay. But the way you have to fiddle with it. So all I had to do was I had, I did have to add a wire. The, the speaker wires were already there. So I had to put this speaker in. Had a little length of wire that runs through here to there. Had to sweat, solder that on, and then I just soldered this back onto that. So it sounds, it maybe looks, looks like it's going to fit. I have not yet tried the body on, so that's, <laughs> that's 
That's the next maneuver. We're going to try that. I'm going to go ahead and pause it. We'll come back and just in case there's a lot of swear words that come out. But uh, it appears it's going to fit. Now, whether I hope I can get it down and get it latched like the uh, Atlas units tend to do, we will find out right now. Okay, here it is. So obviously, I got the shell back on it. It was a little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of a squeeze. I had to crack onto the. Uh, I think there's tabs here on the front. Oh, you can't see. Uh, there's tabs here. And there's a tab here in the middle. There's a tab at the end, and then you had to click it on. Now, am I totally enamored of the sound? Like I said, not really. But it's not too terrible. I mean, it sounds okay. I'm not too thrilled with the bell, and uh, but overall, it's not too terrible. I mean, you know, uh, I'm happy with it. Now, it does have a loc sound, so I probably can go into the loc programmer and play with the, uh, the, the bass and the treble a little bit. They, they give you that option, so I can try that at least. But, you know, it doesn't sound that bad, and it looks pretty nice. So let's see if it... Uh, let me do this. Let me just back up the... Turn a moment here. Okay. Do that. Let's turn it this way. It is a little slow to start because I do have some momentum in it. And it's not real fast. It's not a fast locomotive by any means. I'm trying to turn the phone here with me. Now it's like I said before. I did have it. It was all programmed. It was set up. It was uh, calibrated. Or I did the the CV. What is it? Fifth CV. What is it? Fifty eight. Fifty two. I forget whatever it was. So it's been all. That's all been done. The auto calibration. So it does run fairly nice. Nice and slow. Let me. Uh... Again, the sound, yeah, it's okay. But it's not a consist. I don't know if it's going to be all that noticeable. So overall, I like it. All right, so that's that. Let me see. I don't know if I can uh, do this here without screwing things up. Oh, oh there's flop on me. I wonder why I did that. Okay, there it is. So. That's the Atlas SD35 ESU Loke Sound and the speakers I bought from, where did I get those? Litchfield Station that fit into the pre-existing speaker weight in the back of the unit itself. So, all right, there you go. Let's get it running and uh, some more units done, huh? All right, fun, fun, fun.